But when the president can kill whoever he wants, mm -hmm. then he's not a president anymore. He's a king. To start assassinating American citizens without charges, we should think very seriously about this. There aren't even any charges filed against him other than what the president's people have publicly said about him. Can we just say that because of what we think he said to somebody in a foreign country, he's lost his right to life and American agents can just kill him? If the American people accept this blindly and casually, that we now have an accepted practice of the president assassinating people who he thinks are bad guys, I think it's sad. I strongly object to the president institutionalizing a policy that explicitly says that he has the authority to target American citizens because he believes they're bad people. You don't protect bad people because they deserve it. You protect bad people and go through the process because you think a lot about innocent American people never being treated in this manner. This is something that is... It, this is major in many ways about following the rule of law. I can remember here at Fox arguing in the hypothetical whether or not the president could order an American killed, and everybody was recoiled at even the thought of it. Now it doesn't even make the front pages. What about the Constitution? What about life, liberty, and property? What about the very obligations imposed on the government in the document that created the government itself? Well, that, that's the whole point of the document in the Bill of Rights. Our, our ancestors tried to protect us against this omnipotent type of power. That was the whole idea. They said, look, the greatest threat to the, our freedom, the freedom of the American people, is this federal government that we're calling into existence. And to protect the people from this government, we're going to have the Bill of Rights and constitutional limitations. The Nobel Peace Prize winner has just announced and authorized that he has told the CIA that it can assassinate American citizens in direct violation of the Constitution's due process clause, in violation of federal law, and in violation of treaties to which the U.S. is a party. The due process clause to the Constitution states that no person, whether they're overseas or in the U.S., may be deprived of life, liberty, or property by the government without due process of law, which means a jury trial. He was never tried or charged for any crimes. Nobody knows if he ever killed anybody. There's no trial here. There's no judicial determination. It's some bureaucrat or team of bureaucrats that says, we have determined that that guy is guilty of terrorism, therefore we have a right to kill him. So, so the, president sign, the president says, look, these people are on the list. Is that what he does? They, what, they, what the CIA does, and it, it doesn't happen very often, what the CIA does is they go into the, to, to, literally to the president and they have a list of all of the things that this person has been charged with and they have all of the, uh, not charged with, not indicted. And he signs a death warrant. He signs a death warrant. Yes, our president has a hit list of American citizens like you targeted for assassination. And there are indications that the list of Americans targeted for assassination is growing. Well, we all know that their definition of terrorism in every government, every dictatorial regime, inevitably starts going to, to the area of people who criticize what the government's doing, uh, arguing against it, arguing against the immorality. Ultimately, they start seeing those people as the enemy people that need to be taken out. I mean, this power is the power that the Chinese communists wield, that the Soviet communists wielded, that they wield in Burma, North Korea. That's now a core feature of the U.S. government. That's not what this country is supposed to be all about, Judge, as you well know. I think a court will decide the president doesn't have the authority to kill somebody because of their words that they utter in another country. Look at the controversies that were created during the Bush administration when the president got caught spying on American citizens without warrants or trying to detain them without due process. Here you're talking about something far more extreme. You're talking about targeting American citizens for murder, for assassination based merely on the allegation that they're involved in terrorism. No evidence, no charges, no trial, nothing. And it's extraordinarily dangerous, especially when you consider the fact that when, actual, when, when allegations of terrorism by the government are subjected to judicial review, in overwhelmingly high percentages of the cases, 72%, courts find that the allegations are without merit. So who would ever justify allowing the president to target American citizens for assassination without any judicial oversight or charges or, 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 or due process of any kind. The CIA has the authority to execute 
without charge, without trial, without jury, without judge, without appeal, American citizens that it considers dangerous simply because they're not located in the United States. Where do they claim to get this power from? The president's battlefield powers extend everywhere, even to places where there is actually no combat whatsoever. It's not just overseas, because notice that they've always claimed that the U.S. is part of this battlefield. That means implicitly that they're saying the CIA can now assassinate any American, not only overseas, but here, as long as they label him a suspected terrorist. Well, that's probably what will come next. Or potentially calling you or me a terrorist and trying to have us killed. But I also like the rule of law, and I like our Constitution. I like the Fifth Amendment, that you don't uh, just uh, target people and assassinating them, somebody who has not been charged and you have no proof of anything. So if we want to protect American citizens from that type of justice, we have to be more cautious. This has never been done before. Uh, this announced policy was uh, uh, about a year and a half ago by our administration that said that American citizens can now be targeted for assassination. This is very, very dangerous. You know, uh, who knows what the future will bring. Maybe just dissenters would be uh, a potential terrorist already. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot to be a potential terrorist. Somebody who tried to institute sound money was charged with uh, being a terrorist. That was one of the charges made. So I would say that we should be more cautious. So this doesn't mean that we shouldn't deal with this problem and go after these people and, and deal with it. But uh, just to do this casually or celebrate it, I consider that very dangerous. During the eight years of the Bush administration, the battle was over torture. Whether they had the power to torture people that they labeled as terrorists with no trial, now Obama's taking it one step further and saying, well, we don't need to deal with torturing people anymore. We just kill them. And well, as you point out, it extends to Americans now. You look at what Democrats, including Barack Obama, objected to. It was merely things like eavesdropping on Americans and detaining them without due process and without charges. And now Democrats have completely abandoned those objections now that there's a Democrat in the White House. And apparently, not just detaining and eavesdropping Americans, but targeting them for murder is acceptable to the Democratic Party now that there's a Democrat in the White House. And, and again, if you justify that, targeting American citizens for assassination without any due process, what don't you approve? Not, neither you nor I hesitated to criticize the Bush administration when it was engaging in torture, when it was engaging in spying without warrants, when it pushed through the Patriot Act, which authorizes federal agents to, to write their own search warrants. There was a huge outcry over all of those things. Torture, NSA spying, self-written search warrants. Why isn't there a hue and cry in the media today over the Obama administration claiming it can summarily execute Americans that it thinks have helped terrorists in foreign countries? Not that it has proven to a jury, but that it thinks it has, hel has helped Americans, has hel attacked Americans in foreign countries. Well, all too often the media has become the mouthpiece for the administration, regardless of which administration is in power. I mean, and conservatives bear some of the responsibility here because they vested these powers in George W. Bush, and we libertarians kept saying, you cannot do this. You have to assume that your worst enemy is in power before you vest these powers in there. And sure enough, now Obama, who the conservatives are calling this dangerous socialist, now has all these powers that they vested in Bush. By undermining the linchpin for, for protecting basic human liberty, President Obama is proclaiming that the executive branch of the government of the United States of America has the explicit right and authority to murder American citizens. The extra-constitutional CIA, which has been constantly expanding its powers since World War II, has been more than happy to carry out the executive's illegal orders. The Constitution to the United States was written to restrict the power of the federal government and to assign to it very specific duties. And among those duties is the implicit direction that the purpose of the government is to secure and protect the rights to life, liberty, and property. Based on 9-11, 
the government found the back door around those constitutional restrictions and saying, well, as long as we're at war, we can convert this crime, this criminal offense, terrorism, into an act of war at our option, and now we can do whatever we want. We're not constrained by the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. We can take out anybody. What they have to get back to is the basic rights and Constitution that say that political leaders in the United States cannot exercise power in an unchecked way. My topic for this evening is now it's assassination. What have we allowed ourselves to become? Are we no longer a nation of laws? Have we become instead a nation of men who make secret arrests? Are secret prisons now simply another tool of the federal government law enforcement? Is secret rendition of individuals now permitted out of misplaced fear? Have we decided that the writ of habeas corpus is not worth defending? Is torture now an acceptable tool for making us safe? Unfortunately, the single answer to all of these questions from the leaders of our country and to many of our citizens appears to be yes. And now we are told that assassination of foreigners as well as American citizens is legitimate and necessary to provide security for our people. It is my firm opinion that nothing could be further from the truth. Secret arrests, secret renditions, torture, and assassinations are illegal under both domestic and international law. These activities should be anathema to the citizens of a constitutional republic. The real threat doesn't arise from our failure to torture, rather desensitizing our nation to the willful neglect and sacrifice of our civil liberties fought and died for over the centuries is the threat. The concept of habeas corpus existed even before King John of England was forced in 1215 by his rebellious barons to sign the Magna Carta. This basic principle and expression of individual liberty which has survived 800 years greatly influenced the writing of our constitution and our common law heritage. Today we hardly hear a whimper either from the American people or a stone silent US government as our cherished liberties are eradicated. Instead, we have a government that deliberately orchestrates needless fear and makes people insecure enough to ignore the reality of their lost liberties. The latest outrage is the current administration's acknowledgement that we now have a policy that permits assassination not only of foreign suspects, but of American citizens as well. Of course, the CIA has used secret assassinations in a limited fashion for decades, despite international, domestic, and moral law. When done secretly, as in the past, our government at least recognized that assassination was illegal and wrong. Frighteningly and astonishingly, however, the policy is now explicit. National Intelligence Director Dennis Blair, in open testimony before the House Intelligence Committee on February 3rd of this year, acknowledged that American citizens can indeed be assassinated at our government's discretion. The U.S. government attempted to assassinate Anwar al in Yemen without even charging him with a crime. We're told this evidence is secret that he does not deserve any constitutional rights and that some unknown individual in the administration has the authority to declare him a threat and therefore a legitimate target for assassination. Yes, I know he's probably a very bad person. Yes, I know that only a few Americans are on the assassination hit list. Yes, I know that artificially generated fear makes a large number of Americans inclined to applaud this effort, which supposedly will make us safe. But if this could become standard operating procedure and a permanent precedent is established, let me assure you that this abuse of the law will spread. It's time for Congress and the American people to wake up to the realities of the dangers we face. We must remember as members of Congress that we have taken an oath to protect and defend the Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic. It should not be that difficult to distinguish the difference between the danger posed by the underwear bomber and the danger posed by a government that endorses 
secret prisons, torture, and assassinating American citizens. And I yield back the balance of my time. I have two words for you. Predator drones. <laughs> you will never see it coming. You think I'm joking? But when the president can kill whoever he wants, then he's not a president anymore, he's a king.